Hey guys, today we're talking about GMO houseplants that are coming to the US. This golden pothos is genetically modified to pull more of the volatile organic compounds, things like formaldehyde and nasty chemicals out of the air at a rate apparently, according to the company Neoplants, at 30x better than a typical golden pothos. They named this plant P1, which I assume it's done in tissue culture because they talk about a jelly-like substance, what I, which I assume is agar. And they're claiming that this plant can do it much, much better than your typical golden pothos, but you need to add in a power drop into the soil once a month in order for it to do it. Now, this is a little bit fishy because in the NASA Clean Air study, which has since been debunked, still had a great amount of data about the leaves cleaning the air through transpiration, sucking in air and breathing it back out, but also that the soil at the microbial level was really helping with that VOC consumption, the volatile organic compound consumption. But this Golden Pothos, even though it doesn't look super fancy, it's going to cost you $179. And that's pretty expensive for a Golden Pothos. I would suggest to the company to make it stand out and kind of virtue signal to other people that come by because it's such an expensive plant. Give it a different color, even like a pink pothos or some sort of striping. If you're in there genetically gene editing genes and splicing things at the chromosomal level to change something about its appearance so people know that it's also this special plant and it's going to be that $179 for a golden pothos. Or at least like make an albo do this. I know it's tougher to TC, but make a crazier plant and do it than, you know, no hate on golden pothos. It's just a kind of boring plant and that's ubiquitous. So no one really knows that this plant has the ability to do it. And the company does claim that this is roughly the same price as a HEPA filter. But I would push back on that because a HEPA filter also has the ability to clean out PM 2.5 as well as PM 10, which are dust particles and smoke and a plant doesn't have that ability. But as we said, the NASA Clean Air study was kind of over-exaggerated those benefits and Drexel University mostly disproved it and said you would need like thousands of these aeroids to really clean your air. So in here we're good, but in the average household it's not really doing it. And many of those same researchers are critiquing this new houseplant company out of France for the same sort of thing, saying you'll still need, you know, 10 or 20 or 30 of these $180 plants. But scientifically, it's really cool. And from a TC perspective and gene editing perspective, it's really fascinating of a science project to do. But from a consumer base, I'm not sure. Apparently, according to this article, they've got like 30,000 signups for the waitlist for this plant. And they're contracting with growers down in Florida to produce this plant already. Kind of interesting, definitely cool for the industry overall. But what do you guys think? Are you guys going to grow one of these plants if it's offered to you? And also remember that because it's a patented plant, uh, I assume it's going to be a patented plant since it's genetically modified. If you take cuttings of that plant, you can be persecuted legally by this company or the patent holder. Same thing sort of has happened with Monsanto in the past and their crops pollinating other crops. So if this pothos went to flower and pollinated another pothos and you harvested those seeds, you would be breaking the law according to patent laws. Apparently the company is also working on P2, which is the next version of a new plant to be genetically modified. But I think a lot of this is going to be coming to our market, especially the US via Florida, because we have a much looser law system than Europe does when it comes to GMOs. And the main fear scientifically, at least the critiques of the scientific community from I remember in plant biology was horizontal gene transfer, essentially us humans absorbing the genes of a genetically modified organism. I think that's still the biggest critique, but in the scientific botanical community and at that level of gene editing, most scientists really laugh at that claim. But I think the precautionary principle kind of applies here. If we don't know, let's just be careful with it and kind of take it slowly. Consuming these plants, they're already in our cereal, genetically modified organisms, corn, things of that nature. But super fascinating for the houseplant industry. Pretty expensive, but hey, maybe it's a very, very powerful cleaner of air. I don't know. It's really interesting though. Scientifically, I'd love to get my hands on it and check out this Parisian-based facility of tissue culture essentially. Thanks you guys so much for watching this week's video. If you did enjoy the video or learn something new, click the like button down below. We're trying to put out more videos like this multiple times per week. So thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.